Welcome back, folks. We're up here at the uh, Field of Dreams for the 2024 Arma National. We are 28 miles east of Pittsburgh, near Greensburg, Pennsylvania. And if you came Saturday, it was only for the vintage bikes. But I'm here on Sunday because I don't want to own one. And I'm here for the post-vintage and the next-gen bikes up to 98. We had over 200 entries for this race on Sunday. And... It was action-packed. Oh, man. Take a look at the slides real quick here. That girl there's name is Olivia. The bike was flipping end over end. And she somehow got up and took off and finished her race. I was impressed. I was really impressed. I was racing in race one. The post finish expert 50-plus class. And in race one, we also had the post finish 100 the open age, the 40 plus, 60 plus, 70 plus, and the post vintage women all on the line. 16 total racers lined up. And I also raced in race nine with the KTM. That would be the next gen 50 plus expert. And I had six guys in my class with that one. Also racing was the 40 plus, 60 plus next gen pre-modern 125 intermediates. There was 14 total on the line for that race as well. And... This was a racy track. You really had to set up your passes to get around people. And uh, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. A lot of gray hair out there flying. <laughs> and uh, if you came, I think you just enjoyed the heck out of yourself because uh, the weather was perfect. And we all had a, just a really good time. In race one, the five guys that I was lined up against in my uh, Husky it was myself, Dave Kuskel, Brian Eichelberger, T. McPeak, and Craig Lowry. And then in race nine, there was six total in my class. With myself, Craig Jones, B. Patterson, E. Carter, C. Hag, who happened to be the guy that I followed for a while in the cross-country race because he kept my pace a little bit better. And uh, I thanked him for it, and he came over and introduced himself. It was uh, nice to meet up with people like that. We also had T Trout, 16T on Honda. You can't miss him. You'll see lots of them. Him and I duke it out left and right in the uh, next gen race on race nine. I hope you enjoy it. I'll give you a little play by play as we go here and uh, just scroll on the bottom. You'll see the chapters come up and you can pick whichever race you want to watch or not race you want to watch. All right, here we go. All right, folks, race one, and we are off, and this seemed to be the pattern of the day. I could not get a good start to save my butt. That dude, <laughs> uh, first turn, that sucks to go down like that, man. I got 307. Mr. Brian Haney out in front of me there, tearing it up, and you're going to see a good bit of him in this, uh, this moto. Him and I mix it up back and forth, and it was just a freaking blast. We almost locked bars in this one jump session, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I get around him right here, but he doesn't go anywhere fast. I got my buddy Craig right in front of me. And you know I want to get in front of him. He rode with us today down here to the track, so... Uh, it's going to be a long ride if I don't get in front of him, at least on one of these motos. So we're heading back. Do the little S, S turns here. Going to do the first of uh, two little jumps. Hit them as hard as you want. They can send you out there a mile. Now, this turn up here, I'm going to affectionately call it my Achilles heel because uh, if I had to do all over again, I do a few things different. As you see, I tried to rim that outside and keep the R's up, but uh, Craig snuck by on the inside. And now I'm going to play catch up, trying to get back by him. And there goes uh, 
Brian Haney out in front of me again. So I, I just lost both those uh, spots I just had. Now here's a nice little section they added in here with the rumble strips. I like it a lot. It's not too too much, but you can just kind of skim over across the top of it and get a feel for how they do it in the pros. Now I am going to get a big blob of mud on my lens and I don't notice it and I don't wipe it off in time so things aren't going to end up like it, like they seem here in this first moto. It's going to end up with uh, Brian Eagleberger out front. That dude is super fast trying to catch him. It's really fast. Tom McPeak on 8322 or I should say number 59. Myself, I'll be in third. Craig will go fourth and Dave Cutsko will be in fifth. And that's going to about wrap up this first moto. Sorry about that, folks. You're not going to get a little over a lap, but the roost was something else. We're getting ready to jump into race nine here. Now, I am not going to lie to you. When I'm racing the KTM, at my age, I just enjoy it a lot more. It's easier on me. I like how the bike handles. It's more predictable. But the racing is way faster and way tighter. And you're going to see some good racing coming up here. Because uh, this ninth moto, first and second motos were... Uh, hey, man, they were good. Really good. Now this is the next gen 50 plus expert class in race nine and I got six guys in this class and that guy in front of you is uh, Tory Trout. He races me clean, he races me hard. You can't ask for much better than that and he's got that Honda just ripping. He's up there on the bars sliding forward trying to get a little forward bite to make this next turn. And it's a good thing we didn't take that inside line because we would have been blocked. And the race would have been over for both of us, but he's doing his best to keep his, his line. I'm doing the best to keep my line. And the dirt was a little bit powdery out here in spots. You'll see what I mean here. And, and you couldn't rely on the berms. This one in particular, there was a rut forming in there, but if you wanted to lean on that berm, especially in the second moto, you really had to watch yourself. It would, it would push out on you. I try for a little extra blip of uh, speed there. I'm going to get a twofer on that one. I'm going to grab number five as well. That's a uh, Hosh Lojack. He's in the 40 plus expert class, but um, we're going to make it stick for the time being. Now, if I know... There's a Suzuki, I think, up here in front of me. And I'm pretty sure this is a 44 of Brad Waddell. Talked to him on the line a little bit. Seemed like a really nice guy. Super competitive. He's in the 60-plus class. I don't realize that he's not in my class, but I am racing him hard. We're heading back up the hill toward the crowd. It's always a good time. I was wanting to try that outside line right there. I just felt like I was going to lose too much time right there. Now, I did feel comfortable on these little uh, jumps they had set up right there. And it's all pretty much lay of the land. Uh, you can see the way the land runs right there. But that little jump they put in for us right there, the, right past the start-finish line. Now, that was, that was a lot of fun. Heading back up the hill toward the crowd, toward the start-finish line. It's a drag race. Hard left turn. Then we're going to head back down over this hill. Now in this first moto, the ground was absolutely perfect. There was still a lot of moisture in the ground. And when the shade hit the track right down there in that corner, it was starting to get those berms built up nice. And it was uh, flexing a little bit. It wasn't hard packed by any means. And uh, that all kind of went away by the second moto. Stuff started to dry out and started to get dusty, but you don't see any dust at all right now. 
right now I am doing my best to sniff out any of those leaders up front thinking I might have a little bit for something but then who in the heck is that didn't matter that burn pushed out on me like I was saying and uh there goes Tori Redwood L passed me the two guys I was fighting so hard for and uh but this track is racy, I'm telling you. If you, you, a lot of guys were complaining. They said they didn't think it, they could pass real easy. And I, I overheard some of these conversations, and uh, I think you just had to stick it in there. You, you know, clean, but you had to stick it in there and uh, get close before you wanted to make your pass. And you can make the passes. I made several passes out here today that. I think it was all because I didn't let up. You don't want to fall right behind a guy, but you want to be right there, able to make that move as soon as he uh, misses a gear, or you can get on the gas a little bit faster than him. Tori here is making me work for my supper, let me tell you. I'm trying to catch this inside groove, grab a little bit in. Inside traction here. He's giving me racing room. He's definitely giving me racing room. We're coming back toward the crowd now. Lap two is gonna be in the books. Out of four on the first moto, we're gonna get three laps in the second moto. Plenty of racing. They had 18 motos to try to squeeze in today, twice. And that's a handful, let me tell you. Everything's gotta go just perfect. Jamie did a great job out there keeping the motos going one right after another. He's very timely about how he does stuff. All right, I'm thinking I gotta get something done. I'm pretty sure Tori's in my in my uh, class here. But he's not gonna give me anything. I've been doing that line right there where he dive from the outside into the inside. There was an inside berm error, not a very big one, but enough that you could catch a little traction off of it. And I was able to close up a half a bike length in that turn, but I would lose it going down this straight stretch. That Honda was just running strong. Going back up toward the Achilles heel of my freaking races up here is this turn. I'm gonna send it one more time. I think this is the faster line, so I'm not even gonna try to take an alternative line, and I, I definitely stick by that. This is where I got by him in the first race, and I am going to try to stick it in there again. He is really getting after it. And I'm trying to make a stick on the outside, but there's not much traction out there, let me tell you. There was a berm there, and I thought, well, I better shut this door right now. I gave her a lot of gas in that berm to get her out. Now I got Mr. Waddell up in front of me, Mr. 44. And I'm not sure what I got, but I'm pretty sure he's in my class, but he ends up not being, he ends up being in the 60 ball class. Being out is, you're just out there racing everybody. This section here, I never did find a good way around that turn right there. It seemed like the dirt just started getting pulverized, like dust. It was really hard to grab that traction. I was there watching Mason Grove going around there. He found traction and speed where no one else had it. Down over this hill. I like to swing this a little bit wide and then power out a little sooner and clip this corner off, just like that. I am going to go drag racing up over this hill. I can't catch enough brake right away, and he is gone on my inside. I knew that was going to happen. I'm not done yet, though, folks. Both these guys, he knows I'm there. He did a little look back there. See where I'm at. He can hear my bike. 
Yo, KTM, I had to put a few uh, exhaust O-rings in it. It's a little quieter, but he can definitely still hear it. All right, I feel like I still got something. There is the first jump. And I'm thinking I'm going to pinch this turn down. I'm going to swing it a little bit from the left to the right. And there's an inside berm starting to form here. You'll see what I'm talking about. Right in here. Found it a little bit late in that second moto. But um, coming down around here. We are just about dead nuts even, let me tell you. He's on 250, I'm on 200, and I'm telling you, I think our riding ability and horsepower are really, really close. Now, these rumble strips on the KTM was easy. I could just sit back, crank on it, and I'm thinking, if I got anything for him, I'm gonna try to do it going up this hill. I still got a few turns left though. I don't know if you can feel that roost through the camera, but it hurts. Let me tell you, <laughs> it hurts. Oh man, when I'm practicing, uh, I had all my chest protector goggles and everything. Thank God, because that's not hurt. I could pull up beside him right here, but it's not going to be enough. But I'm just going to let it all hang out here. Third, fourth, fifth gear. I am not going to let off at all. I think Brad's in my class at the time, but he's not. And it doesn't matter because you're just racing for the heck of it and going to pull off that win. We talked later on. It was a good time. All right. Here we go. Second moto of the first race on the Husky 390. I got Craig Lowry out in front of me there and practically the entire field out in front of me it was such a horrible start and we're getting ready to drag race up through here and if you can't tell what's changed it's the dust it was bluebird skies and 75 degrees outside but it was uh really really dusty and along with that dust you're gonna notice well maybe you won't notice because you can't really see it in the video that well but the track got to be what the best way i can describe it is hard pan like a lot of that flexibility that you had in the dirt went away by the second moto and uh as you can tell by the dust the moisture had left and it got tough I felt like I was semi on the edge, out of control of my Husky, because uh, I need to work on the front shocks, that's for sure, but uh, yeah, it was uh, all, I could, all I could handle on the track, because it felt like a lot of the bumps and stuff like that, they weren't moving, <laughs> and if your bike wasn't set up right, I, may, I had... Uh, a little bit softer air pressure on the uh, Husky. Maybe I should have had a little bit stiffer because the KTM I ran three, four pounds heavier and it, it felt better for sure. And I just saw Joey Spade there. He uh, wiped out in the loose stuff. That's not the last you'll see of them though. Now we got three laps to get it done in this moto. Three hard fought laps. I got the guys right in front of me. And here comes that 83 on that Mako. And let me tell you, that guy can ride. I think that's Gretchen. Let me see if I can look up his name right here. Yeah, Joe Gretchen on the uh, number 83 on the Mako. He was one heck of a guy to try to get around. He was fast. Now I can see Craig up ahead of me there and I'm doing everything I can do just to sniff his freaking uh, exhaust. He's one in front of this other guy that's in front of me here. Still got the green flag. Launching it down over there. Hoping I got brakes at the end of this turn. 
That dude's gonna squirt. Give Craig a little bit of pressure there. Craig got that 500 just wound up. And this is the kind of track you can really let her breathe. I switched from a uh, 14 to a 13 2 sprocket to try to give myself a little more top end speed because I knew this track was a little bit fast. I see Craig turn around looking at me there. I am there trying to get it done, but he can really open it up on these straight tracks. I see him pull two, three bike lengths on me right there. Here comes Gretchen again. And then there's Joey Spade, and this just mixed it up for me, something terrible. When these guys got in the middle, I kind of had to like pick a spot where I was gonna try to get it done. Joey's on that 200R, I mean that thing just gets after it. I don't know if I got anything for Gretchen there or not. Try to hug these berms the best I can. Craig and I are just about, I, I bet you if we were putting a stop clock on, on us. There goes Joey down again. If you put a stop clock on us, we, we would probably be within a second or two a lap. He's a little faster in some sections, and I'm a little better, better, faster in other sections. He was telling me that his arm pump wasn't near as bad in this second moto, which I'm glad. That made it for a better race for sure. But I cannot catch up to him. This is getting a little bit old. I can see him. He's right there. You can taste it. Heading back up toward the crowd here. And we got ourselves a race. I'm pretty sure this is going to be the last lap coming up. He's going to show us a white flag. White flag are waving. Last lap. Let's get this done, folks. I'm breathing the dust off these two, and it is getting old. Gretchen is going to get around him right there, though. I don't know if you noticed that or not. So I got Craig in my sights. Last lap. feel like I'm closing the gap a little bit. He's getting a little bit bigger in my picture. And I'm just thinking, what is the best way to get this job done? I'm going to slide to the inside here. I'm slowly catching up here. Feel like I got something for him. I just got to get in the right position. Like I said before, on this fast of a track, you got to get yourself close. Do my very best to outbreak him here. Keep it to the inside. That was good. I don't think there's enough time in the books, though, to get this done, folks. He's liking that outside line, but as you can tell, I can I closed up three, four bike lengths on him right there. He really stretches it out there toward the end there. He, can, he I think he was a gear higher than me coming out of that turn, that's for sure. There goes Joey for a second time, and I think that's going to about put it in the books right there, because if I got to try to get around Joey and Craig, I don't see it happening. But to be honest, I don't think I ever really got close enough to make a contention for this uh, this thing, and I'm, we're going to end up with Brian Eichelberger. He's going to win the class with a 1-1. One -one. You're going you're gonna to have... Uh, Tom McPeak, he's going to get second overall. Craig's going to get third overall because he's going to end up uh, third in this, in this round. And I'm going to end up fourth overall, and then Dave Cutskill's going to take fifth. 
And this was one heck of a race. In three laps, I was fine with. Got us home in a decent hour. Plenty of good racing. Nobody got hurt. And we're going to be on to the KTM, like, right now. Bob Bean is right there, ready to pull the pin, and he does. We're after. I got a little bit better start on that one, but... You see that number four up there? That is who I am after. And that is Craig Jones... And there is that 16T. I think that's him. Let's just see. Nah, maybe it ain't. But that Craig Jones, he was the class of the field all day. Number four. He had a heck of a nice looking bike. Lined up beside him on the line up there and uh the graphics and stuff on that thing were impeccable. I noticed if you preloaded those jumps a little bit, definitely helped out the cause. This little rut section right in there wasn't really a problem, but it was more of a nuisance than anything. I think it's because everything got so hard packed and powdery. You, 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 it got on the technical side, that's for sure, folks. We're going to jump into these whoops. Out across them I mean, like it was nothing. Getting used to them by this point. Well, folks, as you can tell, that sun's starting to sit a little lower in the sky. We got two more laps to go. And we're going to end this with number four, Craig Jones. He's going to get a one and one. Brian Patterson is going to get two second places. And then Tory Trout is going to get a third place and he's going to get the uh, third place overall and I'm going to end up in fourth because he had a 4-3 and I had a 3-4 second moto means more so he gets a third place overall and then Chris Hag is going to get fifth place and Randy Robb is going to get sixth we'll talk to you a little bit later on Hope that you enjoyed the moto videos. We'll be heading to uh, 20 miles away from here, I guess, in uh, about two weeks, and we will see you there soon. Talk to y'all later.
that back straight. I'm thinking he's gonna go for hey, it. Hey, you ever watch any of my videos? Oh. Look up Dave Lake uh, racing videos All right. on YouTube. I got a channel. Cool. He'll be the highlight. Dave, what's it called? Dave Light Racing Stories. Dave Light. Dave Light. L-I-G-H-T. All right, thanks. I'll watch it. Yeah, man. Thanks,